Hey guys, good to see you again. So today I wanted to make a discussion video on a champion that I've talked about in a lot of videos regarding new champions as I like to use them as an example of how a new champion can be designed without needing to pad them with extraneous and unnecessary fluff. Set is a champion that has only been around for a year and a half, but he's already gone through a good number of balance changes relative to his lifespan, more specifically when it came to adjusting his power budget. Every single one of them thinks they're the one to beat me. <laughs> Based on my observations, people have very different perspectives on him depending on what role they met him as. You guys may remember at the start of his release, he was well known for being a carry support because of his good mixture of engage, durability, and surprisingly high damage even when he built full tank. Set and Pandion were responsible for much of early 2020's bot lane meta. On that side of the rift, he was greatly feared, not so much on the other. Because he was so self-sufficient, Riot went ahead and inflicted a lot of nerfs to his base numbers. Damage was reduced all across the board by a pretty significant margin, Haymaker used to deal a max base value of 230 but has since been lowered to 160, other changes like nerfing Facebreaker's base damage and forcing players to itemize more attack damage all but removed his viability in the bot lane. You still see him now and again, but he's nowhere near as effective as before. Basically, they gave him the same tank meta treatment like they did with Echo half a decade ago, where they screwed over a lot of his base damage in order to make it so you had to build actual damage to get the most value out of that champion. So for much of preseason and early season 11, he was pretty weak, quickly went from one of the best champions in both top and support to a pretty mediocre one, and a lot of people were ready to dismiss him as another overpowered champion that Riot had to nerf so many times just because he was a balanced nightmare. That all changed in patch 11.9 when he received a buff that would pull an entire 180 on player perception towards him. First, his ultimate got a bit more bonus AD, which, you know, is always nice. Makes your primary engage a lot stronger in teamfights, which is what he's known for. But the most important change was to Haymaker, his main burst option, doubling the bonus AD ratio from 10% to 20%. At a glance, this looks pretty innocuous. More bonus AD ratios, so he still has to build attack damage. It's the same thing they did to his passive and Q. Lower base damage, so players have to build more AD. But Haymaker is a little different. I'm sure everyone gets the gist of what it does, the more damage he takes, the bigger the shield he gets, and the stronger his punch becomes. But just in case you guys don't know the actual details, allow me to explain. Haymaker's passive stores any damage set takes as grit on his resource bar, with each instance of damage decaying quickly after 4 seconds. The total amount of grit he can store equates to half of his maximum health, meaning 50%. Upon casting the ability, he gets a rapidly decaying shield equal to the stored grit, meaning he can get up to 50% of his maximum health as a shield. Additionally, after a short delay, he throws a massive punch in a cone in front of him, which deals true damage to all enemies in the center. The damage is based on a flat amount plus 25% base of his expended grit and an additional 20% more per 100 bonus attack damage. What this means is that Set's Haymaker damage scales off of both health and attack damage. Hypothetically, let's say he has 3000 health and 200 bonus attack damage. That means 65 of his expended grit will also convert into damage, and we know he can store up to half of his maximum health. Half of 3000 is 1500, and 65% of 1500 is 975 plus the 160 base damage. That's why in the mid to late game, his Haymaker starts to do over a thousand true damage because not only does he get stronger by building damage, but also by building health. That increased bonus AD ratio on his W not only made his burst more painful if he built damage items, but it was also able to convert more of the total health he builds. Before, he would only be able to use maybe 30 to 40% of his grit. So even if he was building actual offense, he wouldn't get all that much true damage. Now, it's not uncommon for Set to reach over 300 or in some cases 400 attack damage in the late game. Yes, it's very much possible for Set to get to a point where he can use all of his grit. And that's when you start to see the 2000 true damage Ws. This gave rise to the mathematically correct set build memes, where players would stock up on as many items that gave the highest possible combination of attack damage and health. Gore Drinker, Titanic Hydra, Sterex Gauge, Black Cleaver, etc. Not only would this increase your overall durability through base health and shield, but it would also give you the most amount of damage on Haymaker. Right now on screen is a clip of me going that build and deliberately getting myself low on health to get more bonus attack damage from Gore Drinkers since it gives you up to 15% the lower your health is. One other thing to note is that Titanic Hydra also gives you bonus attack damage based on 2% of your bonus health. Even if we ignore external factors like Baron buff, Infernal Dragon, or runes like Overgrowth, Set can get close to 500 damage with over 4000 health, making it very possible for him to deal 50% of his maximum health as true damage through Haymaker. It's pretty serious business. 
So that's why that one change to his W suddenly turned him from a 48% win rate champion to a 51. He currently has the second highest pick rate in Diamond Plus and has even occasionally been seen in the mid lane to counter skirmishers and assassins like Yasuo, Irelia, Silas, Diana, Fizz and such. Now, if you've been watching my videos for some time, you'll know that I like to mention Rel, Set, and sometimes Seraphine as examples of new champions that are pretty well thought out. Both give refreshing and creative takes on their respective subclasses, and don't feel frustrating or oppressive to fight against. They have simple yet skill-expressive kits that offer a clear-cut difference between an experienced and novice player when it comes to performance. I've gotten a few comments though in response to that claim, saying he's just as bad if not worse than those 200 years champions. Of course, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but I thought to clear up what I mean by Set being a well-designed champion. And I suppose we should start by answering the title of the video. Is he overloaded or simple? Set is a very simple champion, and by no means overloaded, but he is overtuned. A champion is capable of having a very strong kit that's straightforward in nature. Conversely, they can have a very weak kit that's convoluted. In fact, that's what's been going on with Akshan ever since his release. Because it wasn't clear as to what extent his revive passive would impact the game, Riot made all of his abilities really underwhelming, and subsequently had to hotfix buff him twice despite his overloaded kit. The problem with champions like Viego, Akshan, and Gwen is that there are too many things in their kit being held together tenuously, almost like a house of cards. It's not easy to figure out what influences their win rate or reputation, a trait that causes those like Akali to go through enough balance patches to fill up a dissertation, and yet people still think she's a pain in the ass to go up against. You don't see that kind of unanimous frustration with Set. At the current moment, I won't deny, he is strong, very strong. But an easy fix to his overperformance can be something like reducing the bonus AD ratio from 20% to 15. Haymaker will still be strong enough to smash you to pieces, but it's not going to be a one-button nuke like it is now. The fact that balancing him is simply a numbers game proves that he's a champion with a very healthy and stable design. Set has three defining aspects to his gameplay. One, he's a brawler, meaning he's a melee champion with really consistent DPS uptime while being relatively resilient. It takes a lot of effort to bring him down, and he can pump out a lot of damage in a fight so long as he's given time and the room to do so. A good number of fighters are brawlers, Mordekaiser, Darius, Fai, Xinjiao, but not all of them are. Malawi, Aatrox, and Garen are more burst-oriented, if that makes sense. They can fight for a long time by virtue of their subclass, but they're not exactly able to chainsaw you down. Two. He's a revenge killer. Those of you who play competitive Pokemon might have heard this term before, but in League of Legends, I use the term revenge killer to describe champions who get stronger when backed into a corner. So any champion with missing health elements like Olaf. He's much more dangerous to deal with when his health is low. Having spent the first half of the video talking about Set's Haymaker, it's obvious that you as the opponent have to be very wary when fighting him, as your goal is to burst him hard and fast since he does have good DPS, but if you fail to kill him before he gets his W off, you're going to be eating a huge punch to the face. 3. He has an explosive frontal engage. A lot of fighters have this trait too. Volibear, Hecarim, Jarvan, Renekton, they bank on their first strike to do most of the work since their next one won't be as strong. Set's passive and Q can keep the engine running for a while, but his W and E have rather long cooldowns, so it's in his best interest to make his shots count, especially since he's going to be smack dab in the middle of the enemy team. Your chance of victory hinges if you can wipe them out or die trying. Despite having multiple things going for him, what separates him from other champions like Yone and Viego is that none of those aspects break the constraints surrounding his champion class and design. A good place to start is by checking the Juggernaut subclass. What are they known for? Damage, durability, and survivability. That seems about right. Seth's got damage, he's got durability, and he's got survivability. But what are Juggernauts weak to? Range. Yeah, Seth has some pretty low range considering much of his damage requires him to be standing right on top of his opponents, not unlike Darius or Mordekaiser. Mobility? Maybe if he angles it correctly, his ultimate technically counts as a dash, but for the most part he bears the same movement limitations as his fellow counterparts, so you can treat him all the same. Disengage. Set doesn't have any escapes, so if you catch him out of position, he's an easy target. Being a brawler, he loses out against champions with long range or consistent poke damage. Remember, Haymaker is only dangerous if you burst him down too fast since grit decays over time. Anyone who can deal chip damage has the upper hand. Mordekaiser, Gangplank, and Tom Kench can spam Q over and over again to gradually wear him down until he's too low to reliably all in. Even in teamfights, so long as you pay close attention to where you are relative to where he is and where he can ult to, you can effectively cut him out more easily than Darius. Much of what determines his strength and threat level is how much the enemy team pays attention, and I mean that in the most literal way possible. 
The only reason he's blowing you to pieces with true damage is because you're standing in the sweet spot center. You might go, but he pulled me in. Yes, but how does that differ from a Darius pulling you and then dunking on your face? Think about it for a moment. Why do you think Darius, Garen, and Mordekaiser have average win rates in high elo, but amazing win rates in low elo? Because they're noob stoppers. I'm not trying to be mean when I say this, but 90% of the reason why people consider Set to be overpowered is because they suck at fighting him. I'm just being brutally honest. Again, I agree with you in that at the current moment, his W damage is admittedly too stacked. But it's completely avoidable. Legit, going all in on him is exactly what he wants. It's the same reason you should avoid fighting Darius all in because a long extended fight plays right into his hand. Best way to be all juggernauts, not just set, is to gradually chip them down with trades until they're low enough for you to confidently and completely burst. In a teamfight situation where slowpoke damage is impossible, then literally just run away. Mathematically correct set build is strong, but it has one very fatal flaw. He's slow as hell, and no, the movement speed buff on his Q doesn't make up for it. Without Deadman's Plate, Swiftness Boots, and Stridebreaker, this guy is one of the slowest champions in the game. An AD carry or mage should have no trouble completely cutting him out, and if they fight him in melee range, that's just a positioning problem. Where I'm getting at with this is that you can't conceptually compare Set to the likes of Yone, Viego, Gwen, Sumida, Kiana, etc. To elaborate, Sumida is a marksman who plays almost like a diver. Kiana and Yone are both assassins who have insane team fighting. Viego is a skirmisher, but he transforms into any champion he gets a kill or assist on, so you have to discard everything you know about how to stop skirmishers because he is no longer a skirmisher. I think you get the idea. Set is strong, and in perfect conditions he can one-shot the entire enemy team with a single punch. But ask yourself this question, is that any different from what Alawi can do, or what Darius can do, or what Mordekaiser can do? No, not really. That's straight up what juggernauts are supposed to do, that is their role as a subclass. An argument can be made against that by saying out of all Juggernauts, Set has the easiest burst, and you're not wrong. Getting max damage out of him is much less conditional than, say, Alawi, who needs to land her E, then get tentacles and such, whereas all Set has to do is receive damage. But if you take him on while knowing that information, then it is your fault if you still get beaten by it. I mentioned before in my Too Much Healing video that one of the problems with Sustain in League is that it subverts a player's expectations of a champion. When you see a skirmisher like Wen healing for crazy amounts of health, or a marksman like Samira diving headfirst into the enemy team like she's Katarina, that creates a disconnect between the champion and the class they represent. With Set, everything he does is expected of him. Even Aphelios, the champion everyone was complaining had so much crap in his kit, myself included, is still a marksman through and through. They are still subject to the boundaries and restrictions of their class. If you're still confused as to what I mean, here's an easier way to describe it. Pokemon. What is rock type weak to? Water, grass, ground, steel, and fighting, right? Doesn't matter if it's a super slow rock type like Gigalith or a super fast rock type like Aerodactyl. Rock types share that weakness, barring if the Pokemon is dual type, but that's implied. Now, imagine you came across a rock type that was weak to Psychic and Electric instead. That makes no sense, right? You can't just create a Pokemon and go, okay, this one is Ice type but is immune to fire. I'm aware there are exceptions such as Pokemon with Levitate, but that's their personal ability. It's not like they are hard coded to completely resist a type. Type effectiveness is law, no Pokemon is able to bypass those constraints. Set has an absurd HP and attack stat, if we continue the analogy, but his speed and special defense are really low and he's still weak to range and poke damage, so he still has type disadvantages. Anyway, that basically wraps up what I have to say. In comparison to new champions, he's very well designed and fair. Is he overtuned? Yes, as I've said, I probably lower the 20% bonus AD scaling to like 15%, so at 300 bonus AD, it would be 45% instead of 60. He'd still do like 1500 damage full build, but it's certainly a downgrade from 2000. That's the thing though. All it takes to balance set is his numbers. That's how every champion should be. The moment you have to start removing entire properties from a champion is when you've overextended your power budget. At least, that's my balance philosophy. It should only be things like cooldowns, damage, numbers, etc. Hope that clears everything up though. Set is fine, Yona's busted, end of story, but if you enjoyed, a rating would be much appreciated. Consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Join my Discord server and follow me on my socials, and lastly check out my other discussion videos if you haven't yet. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Take care.